out of the ruins of war there rose a vision. L'Europe ne se fera pas d'un coup, ni dans une construction d'ensemble. Elle se fera par des réalisations concrètes, créant d'abord une solidarité de fait. A vision of a continent united. Peace, prosperity. What were the aims of the EU's founding fathers? Last night, we examined ever closer union. Tonight, we're looking at freedom of movement. We're asking what's become of the European dream. Apart from a few road signs, there's nothing here to tell you that I've just walked across an international frontier. And not just any old frontier, because it's not so very long ago that this was the Iron Curtain, stretching all the way from the Baltic to the Mediterranean, a line of barbed wire dividing Europe into binary opposites. All of that changed in 1989, and this right here is the spot where the fence began to crumble. It was a long, hot summer. On Hungary's border with Austria, thousands gathered to protest. Inside the Soviet bloc, the pressure was building. A group of East Germans made a dash for the fence. 27 years ago, this man stood between them and the West. Arpand Bella was in command of the Hungarian border guard that day. His orders were to protect this crossing by force if necessary. Aztán olyan jönnek a tetőre, már mellig látszanak volt olyan apuka vélhetően, aki a kisgyerekét vitte a nyakában, volt anyuka, aki babakocsit tolt. He now faced the most momentous decision of his life, one that could help change the course of European history. És nem sokáig kellett hezitálni, ez az út, ez a 120 méter, kb. 20 másodperc alatt megtehető. Arpad told his men to hold fire. The Iron Curtain was breached. And so they set off a chain of events. Three months later, the fall of the Berlin Wall, eventually EU enlargement. The biggest expansion of the European project since its conception. Now they could move freely across the continent. For many, it was a dream come true. But it wasn't the end of history. Having played his part in tearing down the Iron Curtain, Arpad now believes Europe should again be building fences. Mi itt 89-ben egy két világrendszeres impériumok impériumokat temettünk el. Most viszont úgy tűnik, hogy valami új korszak előtt állunk, ami a globalizmus, a liberalizmus, a, az, az érdek ütközések következtében, mi most úgy tűnik, hogy egy új sírt ásunk. So what's happened to the dream of a Europe without borders, of a Europe with a shared identity. What's happened to de facto solidarity? In the former communist states, EU accession has meant freedom in a tangible sense. For Andras Lovas, a doctor in the Hungarian town of Szeged, it's meant the freedom to move and work throughout the Union. For me, European Union is a great thing because I'm free to move. It was really easy to move to the UK when I went there as a medical professional. It was free to move, free to cross the borders. But across Eastern Europe, millions of people are moving west for work, and unlike Andras, many don't come back. But for my country, because more and more of my friends uh, feel like this, more, of, more and more of my friends leave the country, not just to the UK, but to Switzerland, uh, Sweden, Denmark. Okay. 
In Seged, a nurse in a care home earns one-sixth of what they could earn in the UK. When it comes to prosperity, the EU has failed to bridge the old gulf between East and West. The young and the capable are often the first to leave. The Hungarian healthcare system is under strain. We have an estimation that since Hungary joined the European Union, probably or approximately 5,000 uh, medical doctors already left the country. But there's something else. There's a deeper sense of unease with Europe here. An unease that was thrown into sharp relief last summer. The migrant crisis. Europe's failure to forge a common response boiled over at the train station in Budapest after Germany had unilaterally declared itself open for refugees. And so began the mass movement of people across an unwilling and disunited EU. When the Iron Curtain crumbled, people thought they'd said goodbye to ideology. But when Brussels talks about mandatory quotas for refugees, many see that as the imposition of a liberal worldview. Hungary was the first to close its borders. Others have followed suit. Freedom of movement is being trumped by concerns over cultural identity. Tilos kimondani, hogy a bevándorlás bűnözést és terrort hoz az országainkba. Tilos kimondani, hogy a más civilizációkból érkezők tömegei veszélyt jelentenek az életformánkra, a kultúránkra, a szokásainkra és a keresztény hagyományainkra. The Hungarian Prime Minister has taken these ideas from the fringes to the political mainstream. For him and his supporters, the biggest threat to their European identity is the European Union itself. Ha a népvándorlást meg akarjuk állítani, először Brüsszelt kell megfékeznünk. Európa jövőjét ma nem azok veszélyeztetik első helyen, akik ide akarnak jönni, hanem a nemzetköziség brüsszeli megszállottjai. Nem hagyhatjuk, hogy Brüsszel a törvények fölé helyezze magát. There's a growing dissident movement in European politics, one which rejects ever closer union in favour of a strong nation state. Viktor Orban calls it illiberal democracy. It, it seems like His spokesman Germans thinks liberalism has become an oppressive ideology. Liberalism originally was giving place and space for open, honest and constructive debate. What we see today, that in the name of liberalism, apart from monopolizing a couple of issues and themes, there's also a restriction on what and how shall be and could be said. We believe that in most countries around Europe, there is maybe a silent uh, but uh, growing majority that who recognize actually that what's going on at the European level is maybe against the very nature of the continent, of the cultural unit we are living in. The freedom to travel the investment in infrastructure, the billions of euros from the common European pot. Somehow, all of this has failed to coalesce into a sense of common purpose. And the divisions over Europe's borders are opening up fissures elsewhere. Fissures that are ripe for exploitation. This is the Poch nuclear power plant. Last year, Russia agreed to lend Hungary billions of euros to build two new reactors. Viktor Orban, an admirer of Vladimir Putin, has simultaneously opposed EU sanctions against Russia. Coincidence? Many think not. On the other hand, including Zoltan Ilesh, who was a minister in Orban's government when the secretive deal was announced. Russia definitely was buying influence in Hungary and also from Russian perspective in the whole Europe. Uh, spending 13, 14 billion euros uh, in Hungary developing, building up that nuclear facility power station 
for decades. Russia will be involved in energy policies of this country as well as Europe. And, and, and he was, uh... On foreign policy, on border control, on that de facto solidarity, Europe does not speak with one voice. Last night, we met one of the EU's founding fathers, Georges Bertrand. In so many fields, he believes Europe has not gone far enough. All governments wanted to remain halfway. They wanted a bit of Europe, not too much. All right, when you, when you remain halfway, you have the worst of both possibility, and this is the situation. The fall of the Berlin Wall once looked like the triumph of liberalism, the historical inevitability of ever closer union. But that momentum has stalled. What 1989 did was it opened Europe up. It gave the peoples of East and West freedom of movement, one of the cornerstones of the European dream. What the migration crisis has done is it's highlighted another aspect. And that is, if you abolish your national borders, you also sacrifice part of your sovereignty. And it turns out that there's huge resistance to that, not just here in Hungary, but across the continent. And so, more than a quarter century after they tore down the Iron Curtain, they're putting fences back up again. In Hungary and Poland, in Slovakia and Austria, even in Germany and France, the political momentum is shifting towards those who reject the dream of Europe as common space. There are others for whom that idea still exerts an irresistible draw. It is an irony that they are often the ones on the other side of the fence. This is perhaps the biggest crisis of legitimacy the EU has ever faced.